is osteomyelitis. Yes, osteomyelitis is the title. <clears throat> I hope I have succeeded in painting a feel of a very, very cold, icy December day in 1940 and how it is a worrisome day for my parents and sisters. I was in the third grade at Edinburgh, Virginia, and it was the last day of school before the Christmas holidays. I didn't feel well that day. I thought I had the flu. When the bell rang to end the school day, my day at school wasn't over yet because I had an hour or more to wait until my bus came back from the first run to take our route home. I laid down belly first on my desk seat trying to feel better. The seat was long enough for me to stretch out with only my feet hanging over the edge. Robert Smallwood came by, leaned over and hit my left thigh with his fist. It really hurt. Robert wasn't a mean kid. He just liked to hit other kids. I really felt less lousy after that with chills and my leg hurt constantly. Finally, the bus came and I was really glad when it pulled up to our house. I dragged myself off and into the house and hit the bed. My leg was swelling to maybe larger than a football, which was large for my young, small leg. Mother called Dr. Downey and before he came, my uncle came and sat down beside my bed and laid his hat on the bed. Just that light jar that the hat made caused my leg to hurt worse. Dr. Downey arrived and after examining me, he decided to get a second opinion and called another doctor. The two of them decided that I needed to make the long 90 mile trip across the mountain the next morning to the Charlottesville Hospital. Travel was quite a bit different in those days compared to now. The next morning was colder than the day before with ice conditions. The ambulance came and I still remember being carried down those icy steps to the ambulance. Standing on the front porch with my mother, mother looking so sad and my two sisters crying. I felt so sorry for them. I don't think they thought I would ever be back. There was no penicillin in those days and some years later I had learned that a lot of kids with osteomyelitis had died. My dad rode in the back of the ambulance and sat by my side. He gave me comfort as we went over the rough and icy road. I could tell that he was very worried. Going over the mountain was very slow. I remember being well on a stretcher across the high walkway to the hospital with the really cold air blowing around my neck. Then I was placed in the hall along the wall with many other sick people because there were no rooms available. The doctor, they doctored me there in the hall for maybe two days. And I had one operation on the outer side of my left leg before a room became available. I really hated being put to sleep with that gas cup over my face. No shots ahead of time for me. After being put in the room, a second operation was performed with another nine inch gash on the inside of my leg. After that operation, I was able to lie on my left side and I felt much better. I think Dr. Valentine operated both times. The long nine inch incision on each side of my leg gave them room to dig out the diseased part of the bone. No stitches were ever put in and the cast reached, reached from my waist to below my knee. Weird smelling greenish brownish fluid drained out for days and every few days they would saw the cast off to clean the debris out and inspect the bone plus view the progress. I remember times when the gauge, uh, when the gauge stuck to my flesh or bone as they unwrapped a hole to put new gauze in under a new cast. I was in the hospital for three weeks and my memories are how sore every one of my fingertips was from being pierced for blood testing. As time went on, they slacked off taking blood from my fingertips from many times a day to just a few times a day. My doctors have treated my mother because my mother came down with phlebitis and wound up in the bed next to mine and didn't get out of the hospital until a week after I got home. About two weeks or so after I was released, I had an appointment to go back to the hospital for a follow-up. For a follow -up. Stayed there overnight and the next day on the way home, Dad had to drive his 1937 Willys car 
through a terrible winter, winter storm. Sleet, snow mixed in freezing rain, you name it. A lot of cars then did not have defrosters as was the case with dad's car. In fact, I don't think it had a heater in it either. These days, or those days rather, most people brought, bought add-on heaters that fit under the passenger side dash. <clears throat> I remember we both had blankets wrapped around our legs as we rode home. He stopped many times trying to clean the windshield. It was a long, cold, dangerous trip. That winter must have been a really rough one around that area. I recovered well and still can walk constantly for 10, 12, 14 or more hours a day, plus run, so I really was lucky to have super doctors who knew what to do and do it in a hurry. I will always remember of that illness because the long line operation scars stand out with only thin tissue protecting the bone on the inner side of the leg, and it still is extremely, extremely tender if it is bulk. About a year ago or so after the operation, some small bones chips worked their ways out through the skin, but there was no pain. Ten years after the operation, the leg stiffened up and was painful for about two or three weeks, but I'm not sure if it was some sort of reoccurrence. Life wasn't easy for my parents from about 1937 on through until their deaths. They had a lot to deal with. My sickness was just one issue for them. Other families had had hard times, but it doesn't take away the hurt that one feels for his, her own family. Some families are lucky and the, then more lucky than others.